Hello, hello, and welcome back to Bella Star Readings. I was recommended to do a reading for the beautiful Josephine Langford here. I have no idea who she is. I have not seen any of her works, so I'm going in blind here. Uh, the only thing I know is that she's an Australian actress. She is a part of the After series. I'm guessing that's a romantic um, series. And what else? Uh, her birthday is August 18th, I believe. So that makes her a uh, Leo. Correct, correct. Borderline Virgo. Um, but yes, that is all that I know. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Um, but I felt called to do a reading for her now um, since Leo season is about to arrive. Uh, so I'm feeling that energy build up. So I feel resonance that it's a good time to do a reading for her. So here we go. We are going to get into it. All right. So I have the some of her cards pre-laid out here. Um, this is her core energy, her core frequency, uh, just to get to know who she is as a human being and as a spirit energy. And so we have big, bold vision, listening for truth. The Lunar Queen, She of the Celestial Crescent, and Eye of Horus, Awakening Divine Perception. Okay, so with her energy, I, I think it's because she's borderline Virgo. I'm feeling very grounded, very earthy energy, but a lot of fire from that Leo energy as well. So she's very much a go-getter. She's got high goals to achieve for her career as an actress. Um, I don't know if she's interested in music. She may lean towards that at some point. Um, so I'm hearing that she could have a, a very good singing voice. Um, but yeah, she has big, bold visions for her future. A lot of sun energy. I'm seeing the sun. Um, just brightly illuminating and um, yeah I'm just seeing Sydney the Opera House so maybe she likes to go to the Opera House quite often or see I don't know what kind of events they hold there I know it's called the Opera House but I don't know if it's just operas or if it's just other kind of musical venues uh, but she enjoys those kind of entertainments um, so if she's interested in singing, maybe she would get into like the opera, opera voice. I don't know why I'm, I just got the image of, was it Christine from Phantom of the Opera? So that might be, if she is interested in singing and maybe acting on stage, uh, that could be something like a, a role that she wishes to achieve. I think when she was a little girl, she dreamed of being someone like Christine from Phantom of the Opera or playing that role. That would be like a dream for her. Um, so just a lot of information coming through right now. Uh, she is very, very mellow, but, um, I feel like she wasn't always so like I feel in the past or maybe recent past her younger self uh, definitely getting like California vibes very beachy but I guess that's Australia too like a beach girl um, I don't know if she played this in her roles as well but like uh, surfing kind of into sports like maybe skateboarding because again, there's just a lot of energy with her, a lot of sun energy, like being outdoors, doing outdoor activities. Mm. But um, she's a very spiritual person, very faithful. Like I, she chose this angel. Like I, I'm definitely picking up like she could be Christian. Um, so she does have a strong faith in uh, outside of herself. So I think that's like listening to truth. She's trying to listen to her spiritual truth. Like maybe currently um, 
or she's trying to find that balance. Like she is a spiritual person. Like maybe she likes to practice her faith in a religious way or like have, you know, do spiritual practices for herself, like meditations, uh, cause she wants to understand, um, like follow her truth. It's like, what's her inner truth? She's trying to listen to her inner truth. What the spirit is guide, what spirit is guiding her to do. Uh, so she's highly intuitive and makes decisions based on that intuition. And it's been guiding her right. Like she's, uh, she's very grateful for that. And that goes along with this one that of with the eye of Horus awakening to divine perception. So she's she could be in the process of um, opening up to her own psychic awareness and being in tune with spirit and just making more conscious decisions uh, with her intuition in regards to her career and her life. And I feel that uh, with this um, the lunar queen here. She's understanding, like I'm getting high priestess vibes too. Like she, like I said, she is working with her intuition, like consciously now. Uh, and she, she's understanding the cycles of life. And I feel that she is going through a transitional phase from like a more immature kind of a sleep viewpoint of more being in the physical world where she's wake awakening to like the more spiritual aspects of life and seeing the bigger picture and how things work and seeing the synchronicities of life that's what she's awakening to seeing the synchronicities and like oh i i was placed here at this point in time for this purpose you know so she's becoming more aware of that uh so she could be seeing I'm seeing bees, like the bee here, like she could see bees as a synchronicity, um, hard worker, you know. Um, is there anything else with this we need to know about your personality? She has a, like with the, the sun energy, she does have a warmth to her personality, like a nurturing sense, uh, or she's growing into that, like she's, be like, Shifting from a like a maiden to more of a mother figure, uh, and it doesn't matter what age you are, like whether she's an actual mother or not, I don't know. But um, yeah, she's entering more into her nurturing, understanding aspect of herself. Yeah, just more mature. Like I said, maybe when she was younger, she was like, uh, again, there's just a constant reiteration of energy, 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 energy. There, she's a, a lot of fire energy and she might've been like in the, when she was younger, um, that might've caused her to get burned a little bit. She might've been a little too impulsive. So now she's kind of like, she's still got that fire burning, but it's a little bit tamed. It's like tamer. All right, and then I got some other oracles here, uh, just to reiterate what kind of current energy she's in. And we have strength. Yeah, definitely getting that Leo energy, even though it's Virgo, but it's like grounded, grounded energy, grounded strength. We have trust. And with the three, definitely feeling like she's in her Empress energy. Yeah. And then we have, again, <laughs> it's like when I was like, um, pulling these cards earlier, it's like, I wasn't thinking of this deck at first, but then I don't know. I was just, I felt called to do this and I knew this, and this card was going to come out and it was interesting that when it did. So just more Virgo energy, but just like high fire, just a lot of fire energy, grounded energy. Which is great. This is this is a great energy to be in. Yeah, she's in her power. She's trusting the universe. She's being in flow and being sur in surrender, um, and just taking divine action. 
inspired action. So I feel like um, she's not afraid to cut things out of her life that doesn't suit her. Yeah. And again, with the one nine adding up to 10, uh, which is like uh, endings and beginnings. So she is in that, just reiterating it uh, in numerology that she is in a transition phase right now. Is there anything else we need to know about you? Uh, she just told me seashell, like I saw a seashell. Um, maybe she likes to, with her being a, a beach girl, um, maybe she likes to collect seashells. Maybe that was something that she wore a lot in the past, like seashell necklaces. Anything else? But yeah, with the seashell, like, uh, she likes to collect little trinkets, like that, little charms, little trinkets. And I see that she has, like, faith in that, like, she, that's, like, her kind of form of divination or magic working. Like, she'll see a, a trinket or a charm, and if she wants to, that's, like, her form of manifestation, um or what she want, like what energy she wants to work with. She'll have a, a wish for that or visualization on that charm and then carry that charm with her. Yeah. Now, please, if any fans um, watch this and follow her, like, please let me know in the comments if what I'm picking up is kind of accurate for her. Like I said, I'm blind about her. I know nothing. And just to get like intricate things like that, I'm always fascinated and in awe if anything is correct. <laughs> it's like I have trust in my abilities. Like uh, I'm better at trusting my abilities, but it's just, it's always fascinating to get validation. But um, yeah. All right. So that's all that I'm picking up here. And we will get into the tarot to see what kind of experience she's going through currently what um situation she's going through because again these readings are for the stars themselves and if there's any situation or message that you as a viewer resonate with take that as your own and apply it to your own life but this is for josephine and any kind of advice that she may need if she comes across this all right so what experience or situation Josephine going through. So we got Nine of Swords. What situation is Josephine going through? Ha! Huh? I mentioned the High Priestess and the High Priestess came out. There you go. Alright, what situation? The world. What situation is Josephine going through? We have Eight of Swords. What do we need to know? What does she need clarification on? Five of Wands. up these two. Alright, so we got King of Wands and Eight of Wands. Okay. And then on the back we have King of Swords. Hmm. Hmm. Put this over here. Okay. So what situation is she going through? Mm. Okay. Feeling like this is her dad. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm feeling that um, she is exploring her spirituality on her own with expanding and looking into her um, own psychic abilities because she's, she's uh, very intuitive. So she does have a lot of psychic awareness and, and she's becoming more aware of her abilities now. But I think it's giving her a lot of anxiety because I think someone in her family, like maybe a father figure, um, isn't open to this because it's causing a lot of conflicts. And sometimes um, she may feel a bit trapped in that. And that's what's giving her the anxiety. Um, Because she wants things smooth with her family. She's a very family person. And she doesn't like discord in the family. But she wants to be able to explore herself and her abilities with the expansion of the world here. Mm. So I'm thinking like what really piqued her interest is that she this may be like a, a future partner of hers the king of wands uh future romantic partner and i think i don't i'm not sure if she met him yet but i think she's been picking up on his energy and this is like kind of like instigate her wanting to expand with her psychic awareness to understand a bit more because she is feeling a lot of movement, a lot of expansion, like I said, with the world and the Eight of Wands here. Just a lot of movement. Um, and then Eights represent expansion, too. So. so she has a sense of excitement with exploring this, with her exploring her psychic awareness and her abilities. But it's with her family she's kind of on edge with sharing that so she may keep that to herself a little bit more because she i think she tried to approach and explain things to her family like her father but it's not like he kind of denied it and then now she's keeping it kind of hidden like she doesn't want to, but she feels like the need to. Mm. Well, from my experience, uh, I can say that give it time, give it time. Uh, just try not to hide yourself about it. Um, Cause when I, started getting into Wicca. My mom, she's she's a religious person. She's very, she's um, Christian. And at first, she didn't like the idea of me calling myself a witch. It was like I was always interested in it, like the metaphysics of it, and exploring that aspect of myself. But I felt like I couldn't talk to them about it. Like, my parents, like, they just don't understand. And to this day, they still don't understand. And don't seek that from your parents. Um, that's what I've learned for myself is, like, don't seek something from your parents because you expect it to come from them because that's when you can get hers. It's like, just let, the, let go of that expectation if you're seeking validation from... Uh, Look elsewhere. Look, look elsewhere for validation. That's the best answer I can give with that. Um, is there anything else for this situation? Uh, nope. 
I think that's all with the tarot here. Okay. And then we'll get some angel answers here. So, let's see. What messages do you have for Josephine Langford? Mm -hmm. What messages do you have for her? There are a couple of uh, angel guardian spirits around her, guiding her along. Okay, we have, it's up to you. up to you so I think that's in regards to that what was it the eight of swords like is the sense of feeling trapped but you're not really so it's like it's up to you to stand firm in exploring your spiritual aspects it's like stay strong it's like she's very strong very strong young woman. All right. Is there any other messages here? The tea leaf tarot. Hmm. All right. So any other messages for Josephine? We have throne, position of authority. So yeah, she's seated in her power. Anything else from this deck here? Nothing from this one. Okay, so then one more from the other one, possibly. All right. Messages for Josephine Langford. All right. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> All right. And hammock, taking a vacation physically or mentally. So, yeah. It's like getting, um, your mind off of your worries. It's good to just take a break. I feel like go to the beach. That would be a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. See if there's like a hammock by the beach that you can just like rest on. But yeah, it's a matter of taking back your power in this situation. It's like, don't let anyone else sway you and think differently. It's like, you can still be religious and, you know, be open to your own spirituality. That's what they call, uh, was it Gnostics? The Gnostics is the part of Christianity that um, dwell more on the metaphysical aspects of developing your psychic awareness. But uh, there's no shame in wanting to explore and understand the truths of the universe and how to work with it and how to co-create with it. So it's like just learning to put up those barriers, even with family members. Like I said, just don't have those expectations that family members will understand. It's like, it's it's part of their lesson, you know, it's part of, it's your life lesson and it's their life lesson. It's like, they just, you know, sometimes it's hard. It's hard, but you know, there will always be people out there who do understand you. So it's just learning 
not to have those expectations of seeking validation from people who just won't give it. So seek it elsewhere. And that's where you have your power. It's up to you. It's like you can do it. You're strong. Take a break. <laughs> Is there anything else for Josephine Langford? And love is coming. Love is coming. Just gotta be patient. It's hard. It's hard. Especially when you're romantic. <laughs> if you've been single for a long time. But it will come. All right, I think that is all. If you like this, give a like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you next time. Bye!